y'all, I'm Tracy. Welcome to Just Dig It Farms. Today I am planning and planting my fall garden. So it's really hard to be thinking about a fall garden right now when it is 96 degrees out here. It's hot, it's humid. I've still got a lot of things going on in my garden. I've got okra and tomatoes and peas and we're still harvesting our summer crops so there's still a lot of things going on in the garden and a lot of harvest going on and it's difficult to be thinking about fall planting but if we're going to have a fall garden we've got to start preparing for it now and start planting our seeds and getting ready for the fall garden so that's what I'm working on today. I'm getting my plan together and I'm sowing some seeds. So I'm in central Alabama, zone eight, and my first frost date is uh, November the 11th. That's round about my first frost date. So I've got um, a little over 90 days before my first frost date. That's one of the great things about living in Alabama is we have a long growing season and we have a mild winter. So a few of my seeds I'm going to be sowing indoors and uh, a lot of them I'm going to be direct sowing outside. So that's how I have them organized in here. All of these in the front are my um, indoor sowing and all of these from here back are my in-ground sowing. And I've got them by date when I need to do them. So I just I figured out my dates according to what the package says, when to plant the seed, how long it needs. Um, before your first frost date. So everybody can do this plan, but it's gonna be different according to your zone and your first frost date. So um, usually the seed packets will tell you like, so um, 10 to 12 weeks before your first frost date. So you just count back and see when you need to um, have these sown. And then that's how I come up with my schedule of when to sow what. This is how I like to do it. It just keeps me totally organized. I don't have to think about it anymore. The thinking's already done. It's just a matter of I've got these dates wrote in my day runner. And then when my date comes up, I just come to my little box and it tells me what to sow, whether indoors or outdoors. And I've got a garden plan that tells me which bed that plant is going to be sown in or transplanted in according to my crop rotation plan that I created. And like I said, you can go back and look at that video on how I did all that. So mostly what I'm sowing indoors and in seed trays is my brassicas and the cruciferous plants, vegetables, and some calendula. And I'm trying some rutabaga. I'm just sowing some seed in trays for rutabaga they really are recommended to do they do better in just sowing them in ground but I've got uh, a good amount of seeds so I'm going to try it both ways we really loved the rutabaga this year and so I'm going to just going to try it both ways and just see what happens I'm sure that sowing them in ground is going to be better but um, I'm gonna give it a try and see because this past spring I only grew like five. It was my first time to grow rutabagas and um, I picked up five little plant starts from work at Petals from the Past and put those in the ground. And um, I only had like five, but we love rutabagas and we so enjoyed having those roasted with quinoa and kale. We really enjoyed those rutabagas this year. So I wanna grow a lot of them this fall. And I did those from plant starts that I had grew from petals. So I figure that they're gonna transplant pretty good. So I'm just gonna do it both ways. But what I'm sowing right now, I'm doing um, some more calendula. And I'm also sowing these in ground too. I've put some in a couple of different spots out in the garden for my calendula. Calendula does better in cool weather. And I would really love to get some more calendula flowers this fall. Um, that's my rutabaga. So I've, I've did some of these in seed trays and I'm going to, in the next few days when I get my spot ready, I'm going to also go ahead and direct sow some of these in my garden too. Um, Brussels sprouts. I'm going to be doing these Brussels sprouts um, in seed trays and I've got some Long Island Improved Brussels sprouts 
and some Hestia, 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 or Hestia Brussels sprouts. I'm doing both of those. We enjoyed our Brussels sprouts this spring too. I've still got a few put up in the freezer, but I wanna have a lot of Brussels sprouts. We love roasted Brussels sprouts. And broccoli. I've got the Long Harvest All Season Blend and um, uh, Rapini. I'm gonna do the Rapini, the Long Harvest, and this, uh, probably this one, De Seco, I think. I don't know. But those are the broccolis I'm gonna do. So, I'm gonna do broccoli, I'm gonna do cauliflower. I'm gonna do this cauliflower. And I've got um, two different kind here. I've got Amazing Taste, and I've got a Snowball from M.I. Gardener. I'm gonna try it. Um, what else do I have? I have some cabbages. I'm gonna do a bunch of cabbages because I got this new fermentation kit and I'm gonna try fermenting some vegetables this year. It's really good for gut health. Fermented foods is really, really good for your gut health. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, learn how to do that this year. So I've got pak choy cabbage. Um, I've got some Chinese, other Chinese cabbage here. I've got some Copenhagen market cabbage. Um, I've got the red acre cabbage that I'm gonna do. And um, I did, uh, I did already, I've already sewn this one, the baby cabbage pixie. So those are the ones I'm gonna try with that. And that's all that I'm going to be sewing in my seed trays right now. Those are the ones I'm going to be doing right now. Um, in about three weeks, I'm going to go ahead and sew in my seed trays around September 1st, which you can see I've got my little tab here that says September 1st. And then these are the seeds that I'm going to be sewing then. So in September 1st, I'm going to be doing bok choy, spinach, lettuce, and I'm going to go ahead and do some microgreens. I like to, we like to have microgreens to eat. As far as the seeds that I'm going to be directly sowing into the ground. So right now, this week, I'm going to try to go ahead and get my rutabagas in the ground, my rutabaga seed. Um, I think that the plan is they're going in garden bed one, my first garden bed where my tomatoes are. And what I'm going to do is just sow my seed right along in front of my tomatoes. And the tomatoes will kind of shade the rutabaga plants a little bit while they're getting started. That's my plan. We'll see. Then about the middle of this month, I'm going to start sowing some carrot seed. I'm going to go ahead and get those carrot seeds in the ground. So my carrots are mostly going to be going in my garden bed too, where my okra is. And I think that I'll be able to go ahead and sow the seed along the okra and maybe the okra can, can kind of shade the little um, carrot seedlings as they start coming up because it's still really warm, but I've got to go ahead and get them in the ground to be able to have carrots this fall and winter. So around the middle of August, I'm going to do leeks and carrots. And then the 1st of September, I'm going to start sowing my kale, mustards, collards, some other carrots, some little baby carrots, and some turnips. And then I'll also come back and add some radishes with my carrots because those are my favorite companion plants is carrots and radishes. So I'll sow my radish seeds with my carrots then. Um, radishes are quick. They, they come in really quick. So I don't want to sow them as early as August 15th. I'm going to wait a little while before I sow my radishes with my carrots. Then about September 15th, I'm going to sow some more carrots and radishes. I'm succession planting my carrots. I'm going to do three different plantings just to kind of succession plant them. But um, I've got that window of time from like August 15th to September 15th where I think that's going to be a pretty good planting time for my carrots. So I'm just gonna kind of succession plant them like that and just see how it works out. Um, I've never really done that, so this is all experiment, so I'm gonna see how it goes. Um, but September, middle of September, I'm gonna do carrots, collards, turnips, mustards, parsnips, um, lettuces, and that's also when I'll be planting my garlic, my garlic bulbs. I'll be doing those from bulbs. 
and I'll be putting in some cover crops and clover about that time too. Um, I've still got about three beds that I'll be cover cropping. I'm still trying to build the soil up in those, uh, the latest three beds that we've just started. And then around October 1st, I'm gonna be doing some more spinach and some lettuce. And then October 15th, also some spinach and lettuce too. I, that'll still give me time for those to come up and, and get established before my first frost date. So I'm doing some succession planting with some of those things like my carrots and my lettuce. So on my beets, I like to companion plant with my beets too, like with my kohlrabi and my um, broccoli or Brussels sprouts. I like to plant beets with those. So I'm gonna wait and sow my beet seed when I transplant those plants from the seed trays to the garden, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and sow my beet seed. Beets come in quick too, so you really don't wanna sow them too quick. You want to um, wait till it cools down just a little bit before we sow those. So I'm gonna wait and do those when I transplant my things like my kohlrabi and bok choy and mustards, cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels, Brussels sprouts. That's the things that I like to companion plant with my beets. So that's how I'm gonna do that. So that's kind of my plan for my fall planting. So right now I'm just focusing on getting all those seeds, my brassicas and cruciferous vegetables, planted in my seed trays so they'll be ready to transplant in time. And then um, I'm gonna get those rutabaga seeds in the ground. And then I've got to start prepping my ground as much as I can for all of my fall seeds and my fall transplants. Um, my garden's really full right now. Like I've still got a lot of things going in my garden. All my okra, I've got some tomatoes going. My sweet potatoes are still in the ground. They're almost ready, but not quite. I'm trying to leave them in the ground for the full 120 days. So um, as soon as I can get those harvested, that's gonna free up a lot of my fall planting space. But I'm just gonna get out there and start working where I can work and like, some of these vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and sow them alongside of what's in the ground now, like alongside my tomatoes, alongside my okra. I'm just going to put some good compost down a row and just sow them along that way. And they'll help shade some of those new little seedlings coming up too in this heat because we're still like at 95, 96 degrees out here. So, so in prepping my areas for my fall planting, what I'm gonna do in some of the spots where I can get to it, I'm going to broad fork and just, you know, lift that soil up, get some oxygen in there, loosen it up a little bit with my broad fork, and I'm going to add some compost. So I've been collecting up my deep litter compost from my chicken coop. I've got some of that. Um, my chicken run is full of good stuff. So I'm gonna get in there and start shoveling some of that out and using it. I've got some busted bags of mushroom compost and black cow that I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna broad fork it, lift it up, aerate the soil a little bit, break it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some compost to it and then I'm going to be ready to plant.
So out here in my potage garden, one of the reasons why I have my beds divided up into nine different garden bed spaces is so that I can do crop rotation. So that I, I've got a plan that I drew out this winter of all nine beds and I did it over the course of the next nine years so that I could rotate my crops in these nine beds. It was kind of tedious and kind of brain warping to um, actually map that out and draw that out. And after doing a little bit of a fall garden last year in a spring and a summer garden this year, I see a lot of changes that I'm gonna have to go in and make. But the great thing about it is, is I have the gist of the plan down and I keep referring back to it. I went and got my garden journal so that I can remember my garden plan here. Um, this winter, when I sat down and drew out my crop rotation plan, I also organized my seed and my garden plan for the whole entire year. You can go back and check out those videos if you want to, how I did that. And this is my garden journal where everything's wrote. So in this journal, is everything I need to know for my gardens for the whole year. And I don't have to go back to my plan and look at it. Everything is wrote down in this book and shows me what's gonna be going where, when. My garden journal and see that was 2018 and 19. This is 2020's garden. So this is how I did it. Like this is my garden bed one. This is the first section over there. And this was my layout, what I had planted where and the varieties. And this is just my notes about it. So this is just information about how it did, um, when it started producing, that kind of thing, how much I actually harvested from it. Up in this corner is what I took from my plan and I wrote down what was gonna be growing in this bed in the spring. This is it for the summer. So when I did my plan back this winter, I wrote up here in this corner what I was gonna be planting in this bed in the summer. I did the same thing for the fall right here. And I did that for each garden bed. So this is garden bed number two, spring, summer. And now we're into fall. And that's what's going in this bed in the fall. So that's how I do my garden journal. It's a lot of thinking and a lot of process and work during the winter time, which is the best time to do your planning, but during the spring and the summer and the fall when everything is 100 miles an hour and you don't have time for all that kind of thing, I don't have to do any thinking. I just have to go back to my garden journal and see what I'm supposed to be putting in which bed and then go to my little seed planting box that I made and see um, what seeds I'm supposed to be sowing when. So it makes it really easy when it comes crunch time. During the winter, it's a little work, which is okay because during the winter time, it's a great inside winter cold job to do. Plus it's fun and it gets you inspired and it gets you ready to get in the garden. So I really enjoy the planning. Of course, that's what I do. I'm a garden landscape designer and I enjoy the whole planning and drawing and mapping out detailed process. But um, I recommend it for everybody because it makes everything a lot easier, especially if you're a new gardener. It just helps you stay organized and not get overwhelmed and not miss planting deadlines. Okay, so let's talk about what's going to be in these beds this fall. In my first bed here, right now I've got tomatoes, basil. Um, I did have uh, onions and garlic in here. I had summer squash in here, but for the fall, what's going in here is rutabagas, which are already planted my seed I'm there. Be growing lettuce, spinach, arugula, chard, and probably some carrots. I'm gonna go ahead and put some carrots in here too. I want a lot of carrots this year. I got a lot of different varieties I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna do some in this bed and mostly carrots in this bed. So this is garden bed two, and I'm looking in my journal here because I can't remember what's what. And in this bed, I'm gonna do onions, carrots, radish together. And then I'm gonna do lettuce, carrots, radish together. Those are my companion plants. I'm doing together in rows. 
and that's what's going in this bed. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start sowing my carrot seed. I'm gonna do my carrot seed like along the side of the okra here. Like right down the side right there. I'll just kind of hoe that up a little bit and then add compost and then do my carrot seed down the sides of this okra. Now my third bed over there, I'm gonna be doing turnips, collards, mustards, parsnips, and some peas on my trellises over there. And all of those things will just be direct sown seed. My carrots, I'll sow them directly too. Over here in this bed, this is garden bed four, I'm gonna be doing a lot of my brassicas and cruciferous vegetables in this bed. So I'm gonna do cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, Bach and pock choy, and some beets. And everything but the beets, I've already started the seed over at my garden shed for those plants because they take a little longer to get established. And I needed to go ahead and get those seeded in trays. So about the time that it starts cooling off and I can get those in the ground, my plants will be established and ready. So in garden bed five here, I'm gonna be doing kohlrabi, beets, onions, and garlic. So I'm gonna do a lot of onions and a lot of garlic. We eat a lot of those two things. And this is bed six, where my sweet potatoes and beans are right now. I'm gonna do cabbages, kale. I'm also gonna put some peas on those trellises there, like some snow peas or something. And then those last three beds back here, I'm gonna do that cover crop I was telling y'all about. I really enjoy a fall garden. I probably enjoy it more than I do a summer garden. There's less pest pressure. There's not as much disease or problems. And it's not as much work. It's a lot easier than the summer garden. Cause like the summer garden, whenever your tomatoes and fruits and vegetables are ready, you've got to harvest them and do something with them right then. You've got to can them or freeze them. You gotta have room for all that. But with the fall garden, you can just leave a lot of the things in the ground and just go out and harvest them as you're ready to use them. I really hope that this video has inspired you guys to grow a fall garden this year, especially with everything that's going on in our country right now with the virus and with the economic situation that's going on and with the shortages in the grocery stores and with the price of groceries being so high, I mean, it's just crazy. So the more food that you can grow and raise yourself, the more self-sufficient you can be. So I really hope that this video has helped you in planning a fall garden this year and has inspired you to grow a fall garden this year. Even if all you have is, is a one little raised bed, get out there and grow what you eat the most of and do what you can do with what you've got. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I pray God blesses you in everything that you do and everything that your hand touches. I pray that God blesses every seed that you sow. I pray he blesses every plant that you plant. And I pray for an abundant harvest this fall and this winter for you guys. Y'all have a beautiful week and I'll catch you on the next video. Okay, we've got a problem. There's a new man invading on my territory. <laughs> he likes to be held like a baby and rocked and sing, I sing to him. I think you need another baby. <laughs> I got one right here. Sweet Amos. Lord have mercy. Any he sweet? He's like a baby. He likes for me to sing to him too. <laughs> What are you singing to him, sweet child of mine? <laughs> Go to sleep, sweet Amos. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he likes it. <laughs>